Hello everyone, this is Yolanda and I'm not sure if we are live yet. Let me see here if I can check. Um, if you're there, say hello. I'm going to see if I can check on my computer what's going on here. And we'll see if we are live. Uh, let me see here. Uh, if you guys can see me, let me know because I can't tell if we're live yet. Um, let me see here. Okay, I think we are live. Hi, Christine. Let me see if I can move this back so that I can see what you guys are saying. Because this is not really working here. Okay. Oh, gosh. Hello, Sonia, Christine. Okay, yeah, I can see you there on the on my phone, but I'm trying to fix it so that I'll be able to see it from my computer because if I don't have my glasses on, I can't see very well. So I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that we have been working on. I know that a lot of you are stuck at home, so I don't want you to feel like, you know, depressed or anything. Uh, let me see if we could do it now. I'm clicking on it, but it doesn't seem to want to open up. Let me see here. Okay, there. I can see it now. So, you guys, um, I just wanted to show you some of the stuff that I had been working on. And yesterday, I did do a video. Um, I'm holding this in my hand because I'm going to put this on the um, tripod right now. But um, yesterday, I did do a video on how to use the Easy Press, And there was a few questions about it. So, I'm going to put the my phone here on this tripod and i hope we'll be able to see what i'm working on see i'm trying to see what you guys are doing here so let me put this a little bit further down so you can see what i've been working on can you see that okay so a couple of days ago i think it was a couple of days ago i was telling you about how you could um you could do a little scarf just using the uh, knit and pearl stitches that I had taught you in the knitting lessons. So here I had just done a two by two and I wanted to show you what it's looking like because I had told you that if you do this stitch, it's not going to um, roll. See, it's like pretty um, flat. It's not curling at the edges. And so what I did, this was like two knit to purl to knit to purl and then but I always did knit the first and the last stitch so I get this little edge and it seems to work really well um um hi Wendy and Liz Kate's art um Sharon's crochet corner I'm doing really good um I was I've been a little tired you know because um I think we just the house the air was stale and so I opened up all the windows and um for a few minutes and it seemed to kind of clear out the dead air there so that seemed to kind of help and um, we got a lot of fresh air right now I did close the windows because a lot of the kids their schools are closed so a lot of the kids are at home and you can hear them playing in their backyards and my neighbors have um, their grandkids they take care of and they were in the backyard playing with their basketball hoop and their tether ball and so at least they're getting some exercise and they're feeling really good Hi, Helen and Myra Dominguez, Helen Harris. So here, so this is what I was telling you that is a nice little stitch. And this will make, this one has 22. I cast on 22 stitches, but if you wanted to do a little bit wider, um, you could do that. So if I put this down, let me see if I can measure how wide that is. This is about uh, four inches wide. And then you would just keep adding uh, rows until you get the, um, the one that you want the the size you want so this is 22 stitches and the needle is six and a half millimeters this is a clover clovey takuma takumi i really like bamboo because it doesn't seem to tire your hands as much as the um metal ones the metal ones um which is what i grew up with is all the metal um needles um the bamboo seems to be softer on your hands and if you're doing a really heavy or big project um having um circular needles with the cord the cord helps to kind of hold 
some of that weight. So because when you start knitting, a lot of your wrist here will start getting sore. And so this way, then the cord holds some of the weight. And so you'll get some, you know, nice little thing. This is a small one. So this is not going to be a big problem. But um, so here you see it's a six and a half. So this is a six and a half needle with 22 stitches and it's medium worsted weight yarn. This is just, um, geez, I don't know if it's, um, I think it's uh, Caron Pound of Love or something like that. I'm not sure, but it's the ones that come in the big ones. And then I just uh, divide them up into smaller balls. You can, um, little cakes and you can weigh them. So you can know like how much they weigh. Like here in the back, let me see if I can lift this up. So you could see that I have um, a bunch of them that I've kind of uh, put in the cake back there. They're all rolled up. And a lot of those um, were yarn that I got from uh, my friend Carolyn, um, my knitting teacher. And she, um, I'm taking a knitting class with her. And uh, they have a lot of different yarns that people will bring in. So this is just one thing that I wanted to show you. Now, uh, you can use the, the scarf. Just make it plain, like, just make it like this without any tassels or anything like that. But I wanted to show you um, on this little piece. I just made a little square to, uh, uh, this is uh, just garter stitch knitting in every row. So I wanted to show you um, how you can make some simple tassels or fringe. Um, that you could put along. I know that tassels and fringe are going to be like they're kind of pretty big right now in ponchos and stuff. So one of the things that I like to do is well here I have a little piece that I had cut off. Let me move this out of the way. And so here um, I'm going to pretend this is like like say this is the edge of a poncho here or here right. And uh, I, you want to do like it looks nice like that but you want to put maybe some fringe on the ends. Um, the fringe, I like to get, this is a little bit too soft because it's like cardstock. So I would probably use something like, um, uh, maybe like, you know, the OCD, um, cases where you used to do the music. Um, I know I'm dating myself, but something like that, something harder, maybe like this. And if you're going to have to, like, if I put it this way and I wrap around this way, my fringe is actually going to be this length here if I want it longer then I would wrap it on the other you know the other way this way I'm going to wrap this this way just to show you how you could do more than just a uh, basic fringe um, it's more like getting into like macrame stuff but somebody asked me if I knew how to make fringe and uh, you don't need to have those fringe um, makers hi Letty and Wendy are joining us here too. Thanks, Christine. She said it's very pretty. So like here, I'm just going to do a few, just a few little strands. So what I do, I just get my piece here. And let's pretend this is where I'm going to be making it the long way, okay? So I would just hold this up here. And I'm just going to do like four loops to four loops. Because remember when we cut it, it's going to be double, okay? So here I'm just going to, whoops, don't want to mess that up. Cut that there and then cut on one edge, okay? So now I have the string. Oops, I didn't go all the way through. So this is where my fringe would be. And then you, you're going to need to trim it at the end. So here is the top of the fringe. I'm just going to put this here at the side. And let's pretend we're going to put it here on this little piece. So I'm going to use a crochet hook and then I'm going to pull it through. So I would just get, um, you decide how far apart you want to do them. You could do them, measure it and make them exactly an inch apart or two inches or whatever. That's up to you. I'm going to put one here in the corner. So I bring up my hook through there. Just through that stitch there and I'm going to grab all that loop there bring it through and it's going to create a little loop I keep my finger there so that I know that I'm not going to make it too too uneven pull that through and then you take it out now you could see the front there normally this would be the same color so I'm just gonna I haven't um, weave this in but Normally, if you're doing a different color, you would weave that in. 
And so that would be your fr first um, fringe. Now, here you could see that it's not even on the bottom, but you're gonna have to trim that. And one of the easiest ways to do it is to put your piece on a cutting mat and smooth it out. And then you could put a um, some kind of plaster ruler and you could use a rotary cutter to cut across. If you don't have one, then you could just use your regular needles. Now, say you wanted to do another one and you and you're like some people want them to be exactly the same. If you have rolls like this, then you could say I'm going to put one every, you know, every other row. So here's every other column. So here's one. And then I put my next one here. Then the next one here on something like this, since there aren't any rows, you could just measure. So that was um, one and say I want to do the next one on number two. Just put in your hook right there through number two. We're going to make our next fringe and put it there so that they could be nice and even. And so here, oh, Lucky is from um, Jamaica. She's joining us. So here I would do a second one. And I'm going to do three just so I could show you what um, it would look like if we joined them together. So there, I'm doing the same thing now. I wrapped it around four times, putting my thumb there, my finger there, and now I can pull it out, grab all my pieces, put my thumb there, and pull them out, try to make them even, tug on it a little bit, and there's your next fringe. And don't worry about the length, you can trim those late when you're done. So these are done like spacing them equally. If you don't want to space them equally, that's up to you. But here I put them like every two inches. So here's one, two. So on four here would go my next one. I'm just pretending, let's pretend this is the bottom of a poncho or a scarf or whatever you're gonna do. And let's do the last one. This is the last one we're gonna do so that I could show you how we would tie these together later. If you like them just loose like that, that's fine. But I'm going to just show you another way you could do it a little bit fancier. So here's one, two, three, and four loops. Don't do it really tight. You just want to make sure they're kind of okay. And then I'm going to go through there, cut my pieces, move this here, get this out. Just a little piece of thread there. Got caught on here somehow. And pull out your next fringe. Okay. Pull it out. So there you go. If you wanted to just do basic fringe, that would be it. Your fringe would be done there. You would just need to come back and trim it off. And then if you had a different color, then of course, sew this uh, little end off. So that would be like if you just want to have just a regular fringe, that's pretty good little fringe, little. Um, and But if you want to do like a little knot, what you could do here is that you would separate them in half. So let's say this would have four strands. One, two, three, four. The other one would go on to your other edge. Here is four and four. That there. So then these two that are closest to each other, you see that? These two. Then you could just make a little... Uh, a little knot to get them together. So what you would do is just go from either from left or right. You're going to go around it just like that and then pull it through. I'll do it again right now. Get them up. Kind of try to even them up and then you could pull it through just like that. And then your trims will be done when you finish putting them together. So here you get your next one. These are, let's get four on this side and oops, four and four. And say this time I'm gonna wrap it this way. Go on top, underneath, and then just pull it through. Get all your four strands and then try to even them out. Okay, this one is not as tight because I usually do them the other direction. So these would be, uh, and then you would just keep tying them this way so that it would give you a different kind of look. If you made them super long, uh, when I mean long, I mean like 12 inches, then you can even do it um, 
do a second row, which would be like these would go this way, then you would connect these like that. And then you'd have another knot here, another knot there. I mean, you know, you would just be separating them and making more, more designs. Um, usually I just either do them just basic um, with just them straight going down or else one little knot like this so that when it hangs, you could see that it kind of gives you that little shape. So that's just one idea for fringe and tassels. Um, of course, uh, there's a lot of people that don't like tassels, but somebody was asking me, what can they do besides just doing a basic tassel? So this is another, just another way that you could decorate your edges. And this is um, actually looks really cute. Like if you do uh, curtains, crochet curtains, or if you do little um, placemats or table runners where people are actually going to be able to see uh, kind of, look to that um, tassel section, you know, but even when you're wearing this, because if you wore this, just pretend this was a poncho and you finish doing all your strap, then you could just lay it, like I said, on a cutting tape, on a cutting mat, make sure you just put them all flat. Then you put your, your plastic ruler, pretend my hand is a plastic ruler, and then you could just use a rotary cutter and then they would all be even but they would have that neat little design. Does anybody like that, the way that looks? Um, because, uh, look, oh, it's, some, say it's, it's almost 345. Um, here, I'm in Chula Vista, California, which is in San Diego County, and it's 151. I don't know if my clock is right, but um, it is Saturday, so I thought maybe in the afternoon when your kids are taking a nap or maybe they're playing outside, you could get together and do something. So this is one way to um, decorate your fringes. And like I said, if you had it, I would do this at least um, 12 inches long, which would be like actually 24 inches long if you want to do it super long. And then you could do a second knot right here. And then your other second knot would go there, another one there. So you have more of a design so it's totally up to you so this is just um somebody put, put a request that they wanted to learn how to make tassels that weren't just that plain but i still like even with plain tassels i really like the, the fringe i like the way that looks i like it on um on the ponchos and scarves not so much for little kids because they can tend to get caught on stuff but um this is i like this um especially for like tablecloths and placemats and curtains where you could see that little design it gives you a little bit more of a cheering up I think it is um oh um Lucky Sinclair says she's making bags and she'll try her hand at anything um yeah you know one of the things too um uh, I saw on the news that there were some hospitals that were asking for people to make um some cloth masks but I had thought about doing a video because a while back I made some for us, uh, for my husband when he cuts the grass to protect from pollen. But then there was a lot of, you know, backlash like, oh, that's not going to protect you from COVID. And we know it's not, but they were saying on the Providence Hospital website that if you do four layers of cotton um, or use uh, two layers of cotton with interfacing on, uh, you know, each, each section with interfacing that it would give you the four layers that it does help when you don't have anything else that it's better than nothing. Um, but um, something like uh, for, uh, they said that it helps you with the regular common cold or like um, some allergies like pollen and stuff. So I think that would be a good idea just so that you don't get confused where like, did you, um, if you're sick or you have a cold or something, you don't wanna get, um, you know, kind of like scared. This way you'll know that it's, you know, you're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, I'm going to show you, um, I told you that I did that video with the, uh, adding the shirt. Let me put this to the side. So you guys, if you want to try this scarf, you could see an idea how it's coming out. I uh, think I'm going to keep working on this when I'm watching TV late at night and it'll probably take me a good two weeks to finish it because I'm not going to be working on it straight through. I have like, I don't know. Does anybody else have like more than one message? One more than one project you're working on because right now I have like I don't know like five or six I have different little baskets that I keep them in or else in plastic bins from the dollar store has those little shoe boxes uh plastic shoe boxes that you could buy with the lid to keep your shoes in well, what I do is that I have one project um in each box and then I'll put like a little note card like this and I'll say like you know uh ribs rib uh 
two by two rib, like say if it was this, I would be like two by two rib scarf, uh, six and a half millimeter needles, medium weight yarn. And then I would put the, a little piece of you know, the color and then say the name of the color and um, that way. And then I would keep everything together in that little box so that when I'm ready to work on it, I just take my little box and take it in front of the TV or wherever I'm sitting or if I'm going um, somewhere uh, in the car, I can grab what's in that little bag and put it in my project bag and just take it with me so that I don't have to be waste. I hate sitting in waiting rooms, not doing anything. So this way I feel like I'm redeeming that time and I'm keeping myself busy. It keeps my mind going. I have, I think one more, I still have one more project bag left on my Etsy shop. All the other ones sold, but they are pretty big. They can, you can carry about four skeins of yarn or more on there. So if you guys visit my Etsy shop, it's Yolanda's All Crafts. There's still one more uh, bag left. And I wanted to show you guys that I have not still not been able to really get really good at pump pumps. I don't know why this is, I maybe because this is too big. I had thought about putting this on the tip of the hoodie for the sweater I made, but I just, I think it's not tight enough. My friend does them and she makes them super tight like this. I have no idea how she does them, but she said she would make one for me. So hopefully she will because my pom poms, um, uh, I'm just, you know, it's like a, a, a fail on that. But I did finish the sweater. Um, I did put the uh, zipper on the sweater. Did you guys see that? I don't know if I showed it to you guys, but I had was just basting it on. So let me see if you could see it. It's kind of big here, but I did put on this uh, zipper here so you could see it. I hope you could see it. Um, so you could see that I did sew it on. I First of all, I basted it on both sides so that I could make sure that it was even and it's a separating zipper. So here you could see where it comes together. And then after I basted it, I opened it and took it apart. Let me see if I could get this here. So I opened it and took it apart. And then um, I sewed one half first. That way I was able to move the little head of the zipper down. It didn't get caught on my machine here. And then I did use a walking foot, which was a little bit harder um, than the zipper foot because I couldn't get quite as close to the edges I wanted to. This one I did a little bit better. Um, but the reason I used the walking foot is because then it moves uh, the bottom layer and the top layer. It's moving it together, like the little feet move them together. And so um, it sews it nice and and straight and flat. If um, I have found for myself that when I use the sewing machine to sew different things, um, if I don't use a walking, I get like this little wavy little, uh, and it just looks really messy. So after all that work, you want it to look nice. So I did this. Um, if you want me to do a full video on how to do the zipper, let me know because, you know, I had to, I'll have to make something, a little garment, maybe a baby one that I could put a zipper on. And then I could show you guys how to do that. Um, you don't have to do it with your sewing machine. You can sew it by hand, but since I have the sewing machine and I have the wa uh, walking foot, it works out pretty good. So you could see that the stitches were very, very even. Um, I'm still debating if I should have gotten a, a colored zipper, but I just got white and so it's generic. This is the hood that I was saying on the sweater that I was saying, I don't know if I wanted to, I wanted to put a pom-pom there on the on the head but it just doesn't it didn't come out it's too don't you think it's too flimsy i don't know so oh uh, sharon said she's going to crochet the easy barrette yeah um i don't remember what size it was um that was a quite kind of a long time ago when i did that beret um, I, I probably just did the size that the pattern called for. It was Red Heart Pattern LW2741. So um, I probably just did that pattern. But, you know, one of the easiest ways to make it smaller would be to look, decrease the hook size. So that might be a suggestion for you. But um, usually if I do a, a video for a different um, pattern or yarn company, I'll just 
do the suggested size that they have. So let me move this aside. And I was telling you about yesterday, I showed you how to use the easy press and it really is easy guys. Somebody said that the t-shirt looked like it was scorched, but I don't know, maybe it was the lighting because here you could see that there is absolutely no scorching on it. I don't know if it was just the angle, but no, it did not scorch at all. So somebody said that they gave the video a thumbs up, not because of the instructions, but because they thought that the the shirt was scorched, but it is not scorched at all. And this is, I tried it on and it's a lot bigger than the ones that I usually get. So um, maybe it's just the cut, the Gildan, Gildan. Maybe it was a little bit big, you know, like a little bit lock, cut looser. So I think it might make a really good sleeping shirt for me. But it was a little bit bigger. It's a 2XL. Um, so maybe I'll get another one that's just the XL to wear around. But they were on sale for like, I think $3.50 each. And it's a pretty nice shirt. It's pretty nice thick. And I like the way they stitched up the neck. It's really well done. So, um, and that was when... I went to get some shirts. I have a dark blue one for my husband. So I think I'm going to put, do something with a wolf. And remember Cricut has added um, like a thousand more images to their design center so that you guys could enjoy that. So I just wanted to show you that. No, it, <laughs> it, it did not, uh, it did not uh, scorch it. Oh, Sharon saying that that pattern is no longer available. You know, they, they merge with Yarnspirations. So um, I don't know. I, I don't know if they still have the same pattern numbers, but you could just look through it. Maybe you could put uh, crochet, uh, beret, uh, crochet beret and see what comes up. Um, I don't know. Some of the patterns they may have eliminated, but um, just look on their website. I know when they merged together, they had mixed kind of, they were having a little problem at the beginning, getting everything um, like synchronized and up there because it was a lot of work to get all that in there. But just maybe just type in crochet beret and see what comes up. Uh, and it might be the same pattern, but it might be a different pattern number. Um, so I don't know if uh, if it's a like if it's a different name on there. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I guess there's some good things about them merging another not so good. So Elizabeth is saying hi from Juneau, Alaska. Um, how many of you guys right now, are you guys in California that we have a, like, um, it's not really, well, it's a, a stay at home order. Like if you don't have to be out, they want you to be home and they're trying to stop the spread of the COVID-19. So I thought I'll just do quick little videos so that, um, we can find something to do. Now I know I've been on quite a while, so I don't want to, um, take too much of your time. I just wanted to let you guys know. Um, somebody asked for the tassels, so tassel and fringe. So this is what I had come up with. Um, give it a try. Uh, and like I said, it, it helps if this is just a cardstock, but if you're doing something, try to find something that is like, um, won't move like stiff, maybe a piece of plastic or something you have. You could even use like a quilting template, the little plastic ones to um, cut it out it's a lot easier than just wrap it and this was just wrapping it four times but you end up getting see this is eight strands there so you have to remember that if you want eight strands don't wrap it eight times because you're going to get 16 <laughs> it just do it like the half of that number so that is um, I'm going to wrap it up so that you guys can get back to your whatever you're doing today taking care of your kids and your family I know it's getting time for dinner in a lot of places now you might have to go out and uh oh and go out and take care of your families Sharon you're gonna have to frog it it's too huge hmm I have no idea because I did that so long ago but maybe you're like kind of more of a loose crocheter so yeah you're gonna have to probably go down a, a one or two hook sizes to see how it how it looks and um, if you guys want to see something for tomorrow, uh, well, tomorrow Sunday, maybe Sunday afternoon, just let me know. Like somebody said they want to learn how to do the French, so I did that. And they wanted to see an update on how this is coming along. So I think it looks pretty good. I mean, 
it's just an easy, it's an easy project for you to practice your knitting and your purl stitch, your cast on knit, purl stitch, and then you can just keep working on it and go as long as, you know, as long as you want. You could even make it a short little scarf or whatever you want to do. So let me know what you guys want to see. It's just going to be quick um, uh, videos. Maybe I'm trying to do it like 20 to 25 minutes or less because I don't want to intrude on your time now that you have your families at home and everything. And you're probably having to watch this during, you know, during the day, but you still have to I understand you got to take care of your family, your kids. A lot of you are homeschooling your kids. And that was another thing. My friend, Susan Plack, um, I'll put the links for her. She has a bunch of um, math videos. She was a retired school teacher, and she's really good at explaining it. I don't know if uh, I know that she did some Common Core, and I know that Common Core is really hard for people like us. To, at least my age, we never, didn't use Common Core, so um, that might help you with your kids' um, math i think it's for like fourth and fifth graders and then she's got other stuff in there and there's a lot of school districts that have are putting their classes online so you could go there too and um, i'll put in some links for some of my friends that do crafts i know my friend carolina Moore. she does a 30 minute crafts and that's a lot of neat projects for your kids so i'll put some of those links for you guys and then i'll see you tomorrow Put anything you want to see in the comments. Uh, hopefully, if it takes 30 minutes or less, we'll do it. And um, let me see here. So thanks you, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, oh, Gina said she used a tutorial to make a sweater for her dog. <laughs> yeah, uh, my little dog used to get upset when uh, I would put it on her, but she uh, she passed away about a year and a half ago, and my big dog my rottweiler has been gone for a couple years now so um but he never allowed me to put anything on him it was just a little my little mutt um she was a mix of poodle and something else i don't know what it was she was a rescue so i never really knew what she was <laughs> but um as far as the mask go the only problem i am finding right now is that i can't seem to find elastic that is thin enough because i use the one eighth um elastic and right now i only have like a three eighths or a half an inch and they're a little bit thicker but there's a lot of different patterns i'll make a video on how to make a mask i'm going to see if i could find some um some elastic um but uh most of the elastic i have is like thicker because it's more like for waistbands and stuff and that little thin one is usually what you use like for bathing suits which i don't make too many of them and so um yeah I, i'll go ahead and uh uh, do uh, look for some elastic I was looking on Amazon and now if you order it's like they're not delivering till like May 1st to May 22nd so that's a long time because usually it's like the next day or the day after for prime so they must be really um, backlogged and um, I know a lot of their um, employees were working from home so I don't know how that's going to work so um I will do a tutorial on the mask and then you could just exchange the elastic for a thinner one. I'm going to go look through all my stash and see if I can find a thinner elastic. But they just say that four, um, four layers of um, tightly woven cotton will work good or I'll um, using two layers plus the fusible, fusible interfacing and on your cloth. Um, and so then um, I don't even have one right here with me because I sent them to my son with my son that day working with children. So they needed something to, um, they were out of mask and stuff. So that was kind of um, bad news. But anyway, I'll go ahead and make some. Oh, somebody said that you can use ponytail ties for the, for the mask. I didn't even think about that. Okay, well, that's an idea. So I want to say thanks for watching tomorrow. Let me know. Put, let me know in the comments what you want to see. Quick little tutorials. Um, I wanted to do a flower, but then I didn't know what kind. And then I have more than one person request the tassels and the fringe. So I want you to have a good day. Be kind to each other. Be safe out there. Don't go out unless you absolutely need to. And um, together we can all get through this. Um, and um, I wanted you to just make sure. Oh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And uh, I do believe it's around here somewhere that they have the um 
the subscribe button and then make sure you hit the bells notification so that you could be notified when we have a new video up and that way you don't miss it. Have a great day and remember always that God loves you.